Hi there, my name is Will, and I'm going to show you how to get started with Kestra today and build your first workflow. Now you're probably wondering, what is Kestra? Now Kestra is an event-driven data orchestration platform that is highly flexible and easy to use. Originating as a platform for data orchestration, Kestra finds itself well equipped for all types of pipelines, especially thanks to its super intuitive interface, as well as its huge support of plugins. How do we get started with Kestra? Well, we're gonna jump straight into the terminal and we can download a Docker image with this command I'm gonna put on the screen here. And using that, we can get Kestra up and running in seconds. Once that command is finished, we'll be able to head over to our browser and put in localhost colon 8080 and you should be presented with the homepage of Kestra. Now, before we jump right in, it's probably worth going through some of the fundamental concepts that make Kestra so powerful. Inside of the platform, Workflows are known as flows, and they're also declared in YAML, making them both super readable as well as work with any language you want. Within each flow, there are three key properties that you will need. First one is ID. Think of this as the name for your flow. Following that, we have namespace. Now, namespace is the environment that you might wanna test it in. This helps you be able to separate sort of production and development. And then lastly, there are tasks. Tasks come in all shapes and sizes, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. But those are the three things you'll need to get started building flows. Here's an example of what a flow might look like. As you can see here, we've got our ID called getting started with a namespace of example. And our task here has a few separate properties, its own ID, a type to define what kind of task it is, as well as a message for it because we're using the log type. Before we get go even further, there are a few extra concepts that are worth knowing to give us the full power that we need to use Kestra. Starting off with inputs, instead of hard coding values, especially repeating yourself, you can define them all at the top, a bit like constant values you might have in a typical programming language. Following on from inputs, there are also outputs. Some tasks will generate an output and you'll wanna use that later on in a, an additional task. Now, this is super useful if you've got files or variables that you wanna use later on. And the last concept we'll cover today is triggers. Other than having to manually press execute, it's really useful to be able to have your flows execute when certain conditions happen. So this could be a schedule or it could be based on a webhook or something else. These are super flexible and let you make sure that your flows get executed when you want them to be executed. Now that might sound like a lot of different properties and concepts to get your head around, but we'll go back through those as we build our first flow during this example. For the flow that I've got in mind, I wanna create a really simple flow that once every hour, it will execute a Python script that I've already got written and it will then send the output of that script to me in Discord so I can know what the outcome is. Let's start by building our Python script that we want to execute. I've very simply here just got a, a API request to GitHub asking for the number of stars that the Kestra repository has. And then what we'll do is we'll hand that data over to Discord and send it as a message so I can see every hour how many stars that we have. So I'm using the request library here to make a get request. And then once I've got that uh, response, I can get the value stargazers count and set that to a variable called gh stars. And for this example, we can just print that out and have a look at that in the logs. Now, if we jump into Kestra and start making our own workflow, we'll have an example one that we already talked about and we can use that as a baseline to help us get started here. Now we can change the type here because we wanna change the type from a log to using a Python commands type. Now. As you'll see, there are a few different ones here. We're gonna use commands because that's best for being able to execute specifically files. So let's say you've already got some code written somewhere. It's quite complex. You want it just to run the file and you don't wanna think about it. This is best for you. But if you're just trying to write a couple of lines and you don't really wanna to have to go through the hassle of creating a file separately, you can use the scripts plugin to write it in line. Uh, so it's all inside of the YAML and it's all in one place. But for this example, I wanna keep it separate. So let's make a Python file and put it in there. The best way I find to find these plugins is if you just go in, over to the topology view on the right hand side, you can press the little plus icon and in there you'll be able to search for them. So here I can search for Python. And as you can see, I've can narrow down my options to just those ones and I can select the commands one to help me get started. We've got our uh, task set up, but we need to be able to actually get the Python into Kestra. 
best way to do this is head over to the editor on the left hand side and in here we can create a new file called api underscore example dot py and in here we can put the python example that we wrote earlier and save that now when we go back to our flow and edit the python task we can reference the file there and kestra will know about it really simple we can edit all of our stuff in Kesha without having to deal with stuff but if you want to be able to write it locally and then maybe sync it with git later you can do that too to make sure this works we are going to have to add one extra property called namespace files and set that to enabled to be true otherwise the task won't be able to see the file in the editor um, which will make it fail then one last thing we'll need to do is just set up a few before commands these are super useful because often you'll need to install some dependencies or something in this example, we're gonna set up a virtual environment, install our dependencies to them, and then we'll be ready to go. So uh, as you can see here, I can add in a, you know, create the virtual environment, activate it, and then I can install the requests library, which we can put inside of a requirements.txt. Once we've done that, we can save all of our files, and then we can head over to the execute button in the top right-hand corner and try and see if the flow works. And as you can see from this example, it has worked. We've got all the output from when it's installing the requirements and then we can see it prints out the final value at the end which is the number of github stars currently on the repository now let's take this one step further our python script's now running but let's get the outputs out of that file and be able to pass them on to later tasks in kestra so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to alter our python file to be able to send that variable back to kestra so we're going to install the kestra library and we can import this at the top of our file as so and then at the end, uh, we're gonna replace the print statement with very simple kestra.outputs, and then we can put a little dictionary referencing our variable just like this. Now, this means we'll be able to reference it in the Kestra platform uh, as gh underscore stars, uh, exactly the same as the variable we called it in Python, but you can change that up if you want to. Now we've done that, we can actually put another log task in like we had at the start and use this to log the number of stars separately to the Python output, just to make things a little bit clearer here. Now we can very easily reference it by just referencing outputs dot the ID of our Python task, which is Python underscore scripts dot vars, and then just dot the name of our variable, which in this case is gh underscore stars. If you've used Python F strings or maybe liquid markdown sort of thing, this should seem quite familiar to you. Now, when we execute our task, we can see here that the Python output is separate to the log and we can see the number of GitHub stars as well. Let's take that again even further now we've logged it separately, let's put it in a useful place where I can see it without having to dig through Kestra's logs every time I want to understand how many stars there are. Let's get it to send a Discord notification to me every single time this executes. Like we did before, let's add a new task. We can do this using the topology view on the right hand side, or we can do this in the YAML. I'm going to go to the topology view, press plus, and then I'm going to search for Discord. And as you can see here, we can see a few different examples. We want to use Discord execution. This one will allow us to send a message to Discord, whereas the other one's useful for being able to use as a trigger. Now, this is super useful because as we can see here in the platform, it tells us what's required, but also the Discord one has quite a lot of optional properties. So this is quite useful for helping us figure out which ones there are, as well as working out what they do. Now we're gonna ignore most of those, but we do need an ID, which I'm just gonna call this send notifications. Uh, we're going to need a webhook URL, which we can collect from Discord in a minute. And then we can edit some of the extras to make our message look a little bit nicer. I'm a big fan of making this look a little bit more polished. So if we head over to GitHub, we can actually get the profile picture of the Kestra organization and use that as our avatar URL here. Uh, so we can paste that in there and that will mean that our message will have a little profile picture. We can also change the name of the message to be Kestra. So we get messages from Kestra every time this webhook sends. Last thing we should do here as well is add the same line that we used for outputting our variable in the log. We should use that here in the content box. So we'll be able to see the number of GitHub stars uh, printed out in the message content. We can use one of those concepts that we talked about earlier to make this even easier to understand. Uh, we can use an input here to define our avatar URL and then we can reference that later. So at the top of our file, we can define inputs like so. And 
these are again quite similar to tasks they have an id and a type and then uh, using the property defaults is where we can put the actual value in this case i'm going to put the url just as is and then i can reference this as inputs dot kestra underscore logo uh, to be able to use that helpful if i want to use that in multiple places as well as just making it clearer to understand what it is our Discord notification is nearly ready, but we are missing one last thing, which is the webhook URL. So let's head over to Discord and create our webhook URL so we can run our flow. Once we go into Discord, you'll just need to create a server if you don't already have one. And then inside of that server, we can right click on one of our channels and it will have an edit property. Press that. And then there should be an integrations tab. Once we click on that, we'll be able to create a webhook and that's where we can change some of the details these aren't too important because the Kestra task will actually define these for us, but we can just put Kestra in there just to keep things simple, help us understand what the webhook was for if we come back later, click save, and then we can get our webhook URL. Now that we have our webhook URL, we can do the same thing we did for the avatar URL and create another input here just to keep things simple. Uh, we can do that directly underneath. Again, giving the ID, I'm going to call it discord underscore webhook underscore URL to keep things simple and readable. Uh, this is also a string. And then we can paste the URL just in like this. And like I mentioned before, we can paste this in by putting inputs dot discord underscore webhook underscore URL. And voila, our discord task is ready to go. You know what that means? It's time to execute it. So when we execute it, we'll now see three things under the logs tab. We can see Python script runs, it installs the dependencies, and then it will set the output correctly. We can then see the number of stars outputted as a log message. And then we can see that Discord successfully executes. Now let's head over to Discord and check that we received our message. Voila, there is our message. It tells us the number of GitHub stars uh, really conveniently there without having to dig through the Kestra logs. This is great and all, but I don't wanna to have to execute this every time I wanna know how many stars there are. We need to set up a trigger now to run this once every hour and let us know every hour how many GitHub stars there are. What we can do is we can specify the trigger right at the bottom of our YAML file, or again, use the topology view if you prefer that. When we specify it again, it will have an ID and a type. The type we're gonna use is just a simple schedule because we just want it to run on a set schedule, but you can do more custom things to react on other things as well if you're into that. And then this one has one property, which is cron. So we're gonna just use a simple cron expression to be able to set up the schedule. Now, I don't know about you, but I find cron expressions quite difficult to remember. So I love heading over to crontab.guru where it's super interactive and helps you figure out what sort of cron expression you need to be able to get the desired outcome that you want. Playing around, it looks like zero star, 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 star. We'll run this at minute zero every hour of every day. So let's put that in our cron property and we should be good to go. Now, the cool thing about triggers is as soon as you press save, your trigger is live and ready to go and it will start executing the flow when the conditions are met. You do not need to sort of turn it on or make sure it's running. Uh, however, if you do want to turn it off because it's annoying, instead of deleting it, you can go into properties and add a property called disabled and set that to true. So you can just turn it off for a bit so it's not running. So let's say your cron expression is like every minute and it's spamming you quite a lot. You can disable it debug or do whatever you need to uh, rather than having to delete your code. Just like that, we can see that our Kestra flow has successfully collected the number of GitHub stars using our Python script. It's got that output from Python, uh, printed it as a log task, then it sent it as a Discord notification as well. Uh, and it did this all automatically without any input from me because it's set up to trigger every hour. Just like that, you have a Python automation setup using Kestra.